Well, I'm headed to Pikes Peak. Last week, if you'd asked me if I was planning on going to Pikes Peak since we were coming to Colorado, I would have said, well, never really thought about it. The more I thought about it, the more I thought I should do it. I got to get that sticker. So I'm headed to the summit. That's the Manitou Incline straight ahead there. That's one crazy thing. I think it's uh, one mile at a, a very steep grade and it was uh, an incline rail system way back in the day that was, I guess it was still in use maybe into the 1980s or 90s. And then they took the rail out and people wanted to walk it. So they tried to keep them from walking it and it didn't work very well. So they made it a little bit safer. They put in some steps and things and now it's a huge deal. Everybody likes to hike it. This is downtown Manitou Springs. Actually my first time here. We've been wanting to check it out. It's pretty cool. Riding solo this time, Tamara felt this was a little beyond her comfort level and although we've tested her TW in altitudes up to 10,000 feet, we weren't sure how it would behave beyond that. But she'll be arriving by truck shortly after me to meet me at the summit. Hello. Good. Good. Did you buy online? I did not. So it's seventeen dollars. Okay. Go up. The winds are twenty-five to thirty miles an hour, so it is very uncomfortable up there. Okay. Are you okay with that? Yep. And a speed limit of twenty-five to thirty with no passing, or they'll send you back down. Okay. Where are you from? Pennsylvania. Lots of Pennsylvanians today. Really. Thank you. Uh, we were we camped up on Rampart Range last night. No, night before. So we got a little comfortable with the wind and everything. Okay. Um, 33 degrees, right? 24 right now with the wind Okay. Well, I brought some layers just in case. Thank you. I smell a lot of hot brakes. <laughs> okay, paid the toll. Nothing but up. There's a view. Wow. The Pikes Peak Highway, constructed in 1915, is a 19 mile toll road that runs from Cascade to the 14,115 foot summit and is open for travel as weather permits. 
Due to environmental concerns regarding erosion and silting caused by the gravel surface, the City of Colorado Springs began paving the unpaved portion in 2002 and by 2011 the entire road was asphalt. We have a long way to go yet. There it is up there. Oh boy. <laughs> Bigfoot crossing. The sign said my elevation right now is one mile below the summit. I have a mile to climb.
elevation, 11,000 feet. It's the highest I've been this week. Ears just popped. Now I know my ears pop at 11,000. Oh, there goes my pass. Yeah, well. Now that's determination. Well, onward and upward. Took a little break here at Glen Cove, stocked up on water, took a little breather. Apparently it's at 11,500 feet. I figure if I go up slow, it's less likely to affect me. There was a checkpoint down there for brakes to actually take a temperature reading off your brakes, see if they're too hot to continue. I talked to a uh, guy on a bicycle down there. He said they're advising cyclists not to continue beyond this point because of the wind. I had checked uh, recent stats online and it said um, they had gotten some gusts overnight of like uh, 60. That's enough to blow you off the mountain. Wouldn't want to be too close to a ledge when that happens. Doing some climbing now. It would appear that I am above the tree line now. It's kind of funny, I think that uh, people are probably more affected by the, uh, the elevation and uh, honestly I can say I can't look down. So uh, I think more people are affected by that than by uh, the altitude. But I am taking it easy because uh, I'm feeling that wind. <laughs> Got to gear down for this switchback. Well, this is a peg scraper. I didn't think I'd have to gear down to first for these switchbacks, but I don't want to stall in the middle of one. The annual Pikes Peak International Hill Climb takes place here since 1916 and starts at the 7 mile mark covering 12.42 miles and featuring over 156 turns. The paving of the road changed the dynamics of the race, with increased speeds and new records being set. 
The current record is held by an electric Volkswagen piloted by Frenchman Roman Dumas, who broke the eight minute barrier with a time of just over seven minutes, 57 seconds in 2018. The death of Carlin Dunn in 2019 resulted in a total ban of motorcycles from competing in the event. To think that they race cars up this as many times as I've watched the videos of them doing it, this blows my mind. I got to give a lot of credit to the guys who do that. You can actually drive out onto the, the edge of the cliff there, that's wild. I was so focused on the road that I never even saw this bighorn sheep standing right here. So, I don't even want to park my bike. I, if I uh, if I were to do a photo op, I'd be afraid it would blow over. Here's the wind they warned us about. I'm feeling it. Be time for hand warmers. again and there's some snow <laughs> this is crazy oh man 
<laughs> Absolutely crazy. Well, they had a marathon up here on Monday, uh, and <laughs> we talked to somebody who was in it, and she said that there was three feet of snow that had fallen the night before. Couldn't tell from the looks of it now, but I guess that happens quickly. You can see that there has been some snow along the road anyway. Uh, I am not looking down. This could actually be the most terrifying thing I've ever done in my life. Not to sound like a wuss. But yeah, it's uh, a little frightening. It would be frightening even without the wind. Now that's a little bit uh, scary, that thought. I wonder if that happened during the race. Yeah. I'm going to hunker down a little bit here, make myself a, a low target, and just uh, creep it. Uh, oh, thanks for those directions. I think I'm at my destination. I do believe I've made it. Well, here we are. How's the wind on the bike? Um, slightly terrifying. <laughs> Only slightly. <laughs> What's that? The switchback has to be a little worrisome. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the terrifying part. And <laughs> and you know, I'm thinking it through the whole way up and I'm I'm asking myself, is this the ter most terrifying thing you've ever done in your life? And I think it actually is. And I, I thought it would be even without the wind. So. The Manitou and Pikes Peak Cog Railway is the world's longest and the highest railroad in the Northern Hemisphere. It is one of only two cog railways in the U.S. Originally constructed in 1889, the first passengers, a church choir from Denver, arrived on the summit of Pikes Peak by train in 1891. By 1938, steam power was replaced by gas and diesel, and by the 1960s, the GE engines were replaced by self-contained 
Swiss-built diesel electric units. In 2018, after 126 years of operation, the railway shut down, major upgrades to the infrastructure began, and now the railway is running again, bringing people to an upgraded depot and gift shop and a brand new visitor center. I got the sticker, but more important than that, I got the donut. And I got the girl. This one.